pineapple sage, typical blue sage, fennel, lemon balm, thyme. There's some tarragon down in there as well. Um, oregano, parsley, some dead cilantro, bee balm, and the last of the mint. There's also rosemary there in the middle. Um, obviously my garden is overgrown. It's fall. It's about time to uh, tent everything up. But all of these are edible and can be used to make teas. another Mixology Monday with the Metal Mixologist from Drunken Smithy. Um, today is a holiday, so I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Hopefully it'll still be fine with you. Today is Indigenous Peoples Day. It's a day that we celebrate the history and the culture and the richness of the Native American community. Um, we're really lucky to get to experience that culture because we did historically try really hard to eradicate it. So today, instead of celebrating a, an explorer who never actually set foot in the Americas, we're going to celebrate the people who were already here. Now, I'm not going to put alcohol in any of these today, and I will explain that. If you wanted to drink something that felt like a traditional, historic alcohol, you could spike these or you could just make a drink. So I can tell you what the traditional liquors would have been. So they would have used the grains and fruits that they had available to them. So the Southwest would have made alcohol from agave, which would be tequila today. The Pacific Northwest would have used the juniper berries, which is gin. Uh, nationwide, they would have used corn, which is whiskey. And especially where we live here, there would have been a lot of fermented fruit, especially apples, so cider. And um, there would have been some meat as well, actually. But today we are not going to put alcohol in them. And the reason I'm not going to make an alcoholic drink today is because while alcoholism is obviously a problem for a lot of people nationwide, and that is why I always make a point of making a drink that doesn't have alcohol in it in the first place, it was um, a huge issue in indigenous communities, and it's still a bit of an issue in indigenous communities, to the point where their rate of alcohol-related death and their rate of fetal alcohol syndrome in babies was in ridiculously higher than the rest of the population. And they had temperance movements and they tried bans and obviously those things don't work. So today they do what we're going to do. They focus on the history and the beauty of their culture and the ritual of it all. And they just choose to include less alcohol in that history and culture when they're celebrating it. They still have the ritual component they just intentionally put less alcohol in it. So today I've made you a hot drink and a cold drink. This drink is actually a hybrid of two traditional drinks. So when they would ferment their fruit, they would just, you know, let it sit for a few days. It would get a little, little alcoholic, a little fermented. And then they would add equal parts liquor, sugar, and apple cider vinegar. And they would drink it that way. It was a little tart, a little refreshing, and very similar to wine. Um, in the summertime these days, the traditional drink that they do is they take their traditional stories. There are lots of stories about strawberries. They're very important stories to indigenous culture. One of those stories is about um, a young couple separated and another is about the beginning of civilization and how a woman was buried and from her burial site through the harvest of the world and from different parts of her body came the squash, the beans, the corn, and from her feet came the strawberries. So at the height of summer, when they're having powwows and other Native American festivals, a traditional drink is just a sweetened strawberry drink. So this is strawberry puree and sugar and water, and I also threw some apple cider vinegar in there. One, because I like tart things, and also because it makes a good hybrid between the two. It is quite tasty. It's similar to um, lemonade or be, you know, like a non-alcoholic daiquiri. The other thing that I made today for a hot drink 
is it made of sassafras tea. So obviously Native Americans would have drunk a lot of different teas. Um, I showed you my herb garden earlier. Uh, herbal tea is called a tithane. And there are lots of herbs in there that would work really well. There's the mint, there's the lemon balm. Um, I showed fennel and pineapple sage. In general, all of those have a wild component that grows naturally in the U.S. and has for centuries. So they would have used those to make tea. What I picked today was leaves from my sassafras tree. I made a tea with those. I boiled them on the stove. I added a little honey to sweeten it. I'm drinking it just the way it is. So root beer and sassafras beer were traditionally made with the roots in the bark of the sassafras tree. And that does have that real root beery flavor to it. It does also have a chem chemical component called saffron that makes it mildly toxic. And to use it commercially, you have to remove that chemical component, which is why you rarely see it commercially now. Um, the leaves worked fine, and they didn't involve, you know, digging, washing, peeling, drying, and then making tea from the roots and bark. But it doesn't have as strong of a root beer type flavor. So it just has just a hint of a root beer flavor, sweetened with the honey, and it's just a beautifully colored, warm day drink. And it has just a hint of that root beer floral note to it. So today, I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm sitting around and reading really fabulous traditional stories with my kid. We spent time outside cleaning up the yard and foraging things for tea. And we're just gonna enjoy some beautiful, tasty history. So I hope you enjoy your Monday, enjoy the holiday, enjoy the day off, and we'll see you at the porch. Cheers.